Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you the witnesses for being here with us this afternoon. I want to take a step back to May of 2020. I served in the Oklahoma State Senate. I actually oversaw the election board um, uh, in my time there. And because of COVID, groups decided to sue the state of Oklahoma to remove the notary requirement for absentee ballots. Their argument was it was too onerous for an individual to try to find a notary to be able to verify the ballot and that the particular statute that this um, was put in was in the wrong statute and so a wrong title of law so it did not qualify. Um, the lawsuit was heard by the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled in fact that it was in the wrong title of law and threw out that requirement. The state of Oklahoma doesn't have any other way to verify ballots. And that happened seven weeks before a primary election in 2020. Now, fortunately, the state Senate, the state legislature was in session and we were able to remedy that quickly. But I have concerns about the, the um, access discussion because had we not been able to address that issue, had the legislature not been in session, we would have had no way at all to verify absentee ballots in the state of Oklahoma. I wanna address Ms. Sewell's comment <clears throat> about um, government issue ID. I think we both are on the, um, on the side of wanting that in Oklahoma. You have to show an ID when you show up at the polls. Even as a member of Congress that's been going to the same polling location for 16 years and the poll workers know who I am and get excited to see me when I actually get to go vote in person, they still say, Congresswoman Bice, would you please show us your ID? That being said, I wanna make a distinction. A student ID is different from a hunting license in that it is not government issued. A student ID is not government issued. And so there is that distinction there, which I think is why there are certain laws protecting those IDs. Not suggesting a student ID is invalid, I'm saying the laws, especially in Oklahoma, it has to be a government issued ID. It can be a tribal, it can be federal, it can be state. And there is that distinction. Um, you also, Ms. Sewell also addressed issues with um, addresses on tribal lands, and I fully appreciate uh, that issue, which is why I'm actually excited that the ACE Act tries to remedy that by requiring the states, the tribes, and the Postal Service to come together to be able to fix what seeming, seemingly is a, a challenge with physical addresses, especially as she mentioned in the state of, uh, of North Dakota. My question is a couple. First of all, Mr. Warner, when you sign your name, on a document. Do you sign your name the same every single time? No, I don't. Mr. Cuccinelli? No. Mr. Von Spaskovi? My apologies for butchering that, sir. Well, I try to, but signatures all vary. Mr. Palmer? I try to, but again, no. Mr. Gloria? Yes, I do make an attempt to try to keep it consistent. The question is important because Mr. Glory, in the state of Nevada, the only way that you have to verify a ballot is through signature verification, is that correct? That is the first level of verification, is to check that the signature matches, that's correct. How can you have any sort of sense of accuracy or confidence in the ability to accept a ballot when almost everyone on this panel today, and I would add myself into this mix, would tell you that their signatures vary sometimes widely when they sign a document, especially as we age. My voter registration in, when I was 18 years old is probably pretty different than the signature I now have at almost 50. How can we have any certainty that these ballots are valid? Well, I would say first off, Congresswoman, and thank you for the question, um, we have a database of signatures. so. Any document that comes from the voter, whether they're signing in to vote, whether it's an absentee ballot, or mail ballot, I should say, or, or an update of information. Wait, wait, uh, can you clarify updated we, information we for me? We store that signature in our database, and can so you, we have a bank of them. Can you clarify updated information for me? Updated information related to their address. That would be one example. So it's solely related to voter. You're not collecting s signatures from other 
either entities or private business, is that correct? Not private business, no, Congresswoman, but we do collect them from the Department of Motor Vehicles. Okay. Thank you, I yield back.